Hello everyone, this is MD Ajizul Islam from the University of Texas at Arlington. Our today's topic is compaction test of soil. In this test, we will describe the moisture density relationship of soil for defined compacting efforts. So the soil compaction can be defined as the method of mechanically increasing the density of soil thus by reducing the volume of air. If we see in this picture, if we apply any compaction load, the volume of the soil will decrease. The total volume of the soil will be less before the compaction, but the weight of the soil will remain same. So we know that density is weight divided by total volume. So the density of the soil will increase. So why the soil compaction is important for us? With the help of soil compaction, actually it will increase the shear strength of soil, it will reduce the soil settlement, permeability, frost damage and erosion damage. Before the soil compaction, we need to know what are the factors that affect the behavior of the soil compaction. Actually, it's the soil type the water content and the compaction energy that means how much energy you are you are applying for the compaction there are different types of compaction like vibration impact kneading and pressures so in laboratory there are three methods uh, by which we can do the soil compaction one is standard proctor test another is modified proctor test and the uh, third one is gyratory compaction so the difference between a standard proctor and modified proctor test are very simple so for in the standard proctor test we will compact the soil in three defined layers and the fall height of the hammer will be 12 inch and the weight of the hammer will be five and a half pounds whereas for the modified proctor test the weight of the hammer will increased to 10 pounds the fall height will be 18 inch and we will compact the soil sample in five different layers. So for the modified proctor test we are applying more energy and for the standard proctor test we are applying less energy compared to the modified proctor test. So let's discuss the procedure for the standard proctor test. At first we need to take a certain amount of soil, so let's say it's 10 pounds. Then we need to pulverize the soil and we will run through the number 4 sieve and we will collect the soil sample that passes the number 4 sieve. And after that we will measure the amount of water to be added uh, in the soil. So we will do different trials with different water content. We will start from 6% water content and up to 24% because moisture content, optimum moisture content of the soil vary in between 6 to 24%. So after uh, fixing the amount of water, we will mix the water with the soil thoroughly and then we will put the soil in the compaction mold and before that we will take the weight of the compaction mold and then we will add the collar in the uh, compaction mold and we will place the soil samples with three refined layers and each layer will do the compaction that means 25 blows per layer after that we will open uh, open the collar from that mold and we will cut the extra portion of the soil that means we will trim trim off the compacted soil and then we will take the weight of the mold with wet soil so the difference will be the weight of the compacted soil and we know the volume of the mold so if we divide the weight of the compacted soil with the volume then we will get the weight density of the soil and then we will extrude the soil sample with the help of a mechanical extruder then we will take two samples for moisture content one is from the top of the mold and the another is from the bottom of the mold so with 
the help of this uh, moisture content, we will know the exact moisture content of the compacted soil specimen. So, if we do defined trials for defined moisture content test, we will get defined density. So, uh, we can plot the dry density versus water content curve. So, we will get a parabolic shape curve and in that curve, the maximum point will be the maximum dry density and uh, for the corresponding water content, it's, it is the optimum moisture content. So, in that region, the soil grains are densely packed, thus it will give good shear strength behavior and stiffness and also it will offer less permeability. So, optimum moisture content, that means this value will differ uh, uh, based on the type of soil. So, for fine grain soil, it will differ from 12 to 25%, for the coarse grain soil, it will differ 7 to 12%. So, from that curve, we will get the dry density and the optimum, uh, maximum dry density and the optimum moisture content. Also, we will get the zero AR void curve with the help of this formula. So, the zero AR void curve means the degree of saturation is 100%. That means, after the compaction, there will be some AR voids. The AR voids will get reduced, but still there will be some AR voids. And if the AR voids are completely filled with water, that means there will be no air void. So, the degree of saturation will be 100% and that point will, is called the zero air void. So, the compaction and the region of the compaction curve can be divided into two parts. One is wet to optimum part and the another is dry to optimum part. That means we can compact the soil in the dry portion or in the wet portion depending on the project you are working on. So, if it is an embankment project, that means for the embankment, we want to ensure that the material will be less permeable. So, we need to compact the soil in the wet region. And if it is a pavement project, that means we need to ensure that the material will be more pervious, that means the rainwater will go through it and it will uh, infiltrate at the bottom. So, we need to compact the soil in the dry region. So, depending on the test, that means if you are doing a standard proctor test or you are doing modified proctor test, the compaction curve will change. So, for the standard proctor test, the compaction curve is the blue one and the modified proctor test, the compaction curve is the orange one that means if we apply more energy to the soil the curve will shift upwards and slightly leftwards so higher energy will shift the curve towards upper left position so uh, in the field when we need to compact the soil at first we need to do the standard proctor test in the laboratory. That means before starting a project, we need to collect soil sample and we will conduct a standard proctor test and we will get this type of curve. So, often the uh, in the field compaction, the maximum dry density in the field may reach up to 90 to 95%. So, uh, before starting the field compaction, this curve is very much important. So, the relative compaction is a measure by which we can determine how much soil is compacted compared to the standard proctor test. So, it depends on the void ratio and the dry density. So, there are two terms, one is relative density and the another is relative compaction. So, with the help of these two terms, we will know how much compaction is done. So, in the field, there are different types of instruments by which we can do the field compaction. 
the most convenience if the project is small then the rammer and the vibratory plates if the area is small to compact we will use this type of instruments and we need to use the rollers for a highway project or a, an embankment project and uh, what depending on the soil type the types of the roller will change so if it's sand then we need to use a vibratory roller if it's a clay then we need to use a ship footed roller also some of the case uh, the, the dynamic compression is also done so uh, at first when a project starts we need to ensure that the field compaction will reach at a certain level so we need to do the field compaction test and also we need to do the standard compaction test and we will compare both the results whether the relative compaction is reaches up to 90 or 95 percent as per the tender requirements so let's see an example for the laboratory standard photo test so if we take a soil sample with a specific gravity of 2.70 then we can do the standard proctor test for the standard proctor test we already know the volume of the mold so for the defined trials we will get the weight of the wet soil in the mold and thus if we divide this weight by the volume we will get the weight unit weight and after the test we will also do the water content test and with the help of this formula we will get the dry unit weight so we know the water content and we know the dry unit weight so we can plot the dry density versus the water content and we will get a curve like this so the maximum point of the curve is corresponding to the optimum moisture content and the maximum dry density and also with the help of this equation we'll get the zero air void curve that means if we know the specific gravity of the soil and for the zero air void curve the degree of saturation is 100 percent that means one so for defined moisture content if we put defined moisture content values we'll get the zero air void lines so here are some additional video tutorial link that will be helpful for you to understand in depth about this experiment thank you for all for listening to this lecture hope to see you in the next video